Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. My name is Elazar Lebovic. I, uh, I was working on uh, virtualization and network virtualization in Ravelo, and there I, I fell in love with Linux uh, networking internals. I also wrote uh, the Go proxy, uh, proxy library, pro programming library that uh, also has a lot to do with networking. So networking is a topic close to my, to my heart. Uh, and this DevOps day this year is all about the basic building blocks of our uh, systems. Um, this is another topic, a topic which I uh, really like. Uh, many years ago, uh, I learned DHTML. Did anyone hear? Uh, did anyone hear about that? DHTML. One hand, two hand. Ten hand. Well, I, I can tell you uh, that today this is not relevant. However, if I had learned then uh, TCP, many of the things I've learned by then would still be relevant today. So um, learning the basic building blocks could be very useful. So today I'm going to uh, explain the, uh, how network packets are processed uh, through an example, a uh, uh, problem uh, one can run into when running containers and dockers. Um, this is not a comprehensive talk about every possible Linux and network device. Uh, this is not an in-depth talk about every little detail that the kernel does to the packet once it's received. I would skip details. Uh, I would be slightly. Um, I would simplify things. What What's important for me is to give you the uh, high-level view and to get you enthusiastic. I, um, uh, I'll be very happy if uh, anyone would um, exit this talk and would like to learn more about uh, uh, networking in general, Linux networking in particular. Um, so let's uh, start at right away. What's the problem I've run into? So let's say you wrote uh, an application, um, uh, something like CollectD, an uh, application that receives metrics via UDP and builds beautiful graphs from this, those metrics. Not, not like this one, really beautiful graphs. Uh, and you developed it, it works, everything is good. Now you deploy it, you run it in, in the production, uh, production like environment with Docker, that's what everyone does. You would probably run it with a command line like this one, and it would work. You would send uh, metrics and data from your laptop to the container. The container would uh, receive them. But the problem, our problem starts uh, if um, you tell your manager about that. Uh, you both want to test your uh, container now with uh, his metrics to see how your container uh, handles them. Um, and he wants to send your packet from his laptop to your container. So Docker has a solution for that. It's called port mapping or expose. And if you would run your container with a command line like this one, it would map port 8000 on your laptop to port 8000 on your container, and it would work. Uh, you both would be able to send data to your laptop at port 8000, and, to, and Docker would make sure uh, that uh, the packets would reach uh, the container. Um, so far, so good, but what happens if for some reason we didn't start it with the correct port mapping? The container is running, um, some other uh, processes are using it, or it's doing a long um, processing. You don't want to stop in the middle. And you want to do this uh, port mapping. You want data to reach to this container from your boss laptop uh, without stopping the container. You can't stop it and run it again with port mapping. Uh, what can you do? Uh, so the first thing I do uh, is I switch the internet. And that's what I came up with when I Google for the relevant keywords. And this looks like an official answer from Docker because it says Docker staff. Uh, and the answer, uh, I can summarize it in one word. No, you can't do that. If you want to use port mapping, you have to kill the container. You have to stop the container and start it, uh, start it again. So what I, what I want to do, the boss is at my desk. He's waiting to see what his metrics, uh, how, he, how the graph from his metrics would look like. And I want to enable um, his metrics to reach my container without stopping it. This is the problem. So, but before we understand how to do that, we first need to understand uh, 
how packet reach the container from uh, my laptop before we start solving the problem of uh, uh, packets getting from my boss laptop. So uh, there are three networking concepts uh, I need to introduce to explain how this happened. The first one is network namespace. Network namespace is all network related things like routing tables, um, network devices in a box, isolated. Um, every Docker container by default starts in its own network namespace. So network namespace allows us isolation of everything related to networking. Every network, uh, every process is in its own, uh, in a single uh, network namespace. Every network device in your machine is in a single network namespace, and your laptop starts with a default network namespace. So that everything uh, by default is in it. So um, how do we diagnose that? An easy way to see it, uh, um, the, the different network namespace is you can do that with simple ls. The procfs slash proc slash proc id slash ns is a directory that contains the various name uh, namespaces of a single process. And here you can see uh, in the line above the network namespace of a process inside the Docker container, which is different from the network namespace of uh, system D process, which is process one. So uh, as we said, network namespaces are isolated. So by default, you cannot send anything from the Docker namespace to your default namespace, to your laptop. How do we do that? So the first, uh, the, uh, <coughs> the first network device that helps us in this task is a virtu virtual Ethernet pair, or VES pair. VES pair is something like that. Uh, two network devices, one network device, one peer, Every packet reaches to one end, would be sent to its peer, and vice versa. And we can put one end inside one network namespace, the other end in our laptop in the default network namespace, and uh, the, uh, the, the container and the default network namespace would be able to uh, speak with one, uh, one another through this um, VES pair. Uh, the other component is bridge. A bridge is like a physical um, switch uh, the bridge allows us to, uh, to enslave, to connect many network devices, to put them inside the, uh, the bridge, and the bridge would know uh, uh, when a packet reaches uh, the bridge, it would select its destination from one of the devices enslaved, um, and would move the packet uh, to this uh, um, port or network device. Uh, this is the way Docker connect many containers to one another. Um, so let, let's see a, a simple example. Uh, so to your left, you can see the default namespace, our laptop. To your right, the Docker namespace. We're sending a packet um, to whose destination IP is uh, our container IP. Uh, the Linux finds out that it needs to send this packet through, this, uh, through the uh, bridge. The bridge is usually called the Docker Zero. It sends it to the, to, to the, docker, the network interface of the bridge. The network interface moves it to the bridge. The bridge moves it to one end of the Vesper. The Vesper moves it to the other end, and that's how uh, this packet, the packet reaches the container. Okay, again, how can we see? We're logged into a device. How can we see that we have a Vesper? Uh, one way to do that is to use the IP root 2 uh, suit, which is usually installed on almost any. Uh, uh, Linux device, IPLink or IPL would give us a list of the network devices in the in the current uh, namespace, and the at sign uh, tells us that uh, device number fifty one, whose name is VES five O D one four four, is a VES pair, and its peer is device number fifty. So this is uh, how we can. <coughs> Know that uh, um, I can find out that uh, that we have a Vesper. Uh, this this very same command can tell that can tell us that uh, that uh, a Vesper, uh, a network device is inside the bridge. Master Docker Zero means this device ID twenty five is inside Docker Zero. 
And this is another thing, a useful concept, CSFS. This is a file system which can show details about network devices, and it shows us that Docker Zero is indeed a bridge. Okay, then, now back to the problem. Uh, we don't want to reach from the laptop to the container. We, we can already do that. We need to reach from our uh, network interface to the, to the bridge, because uh, our boss sends packet to our laptop, and those packets are received by our, by our network card, which is many times S0. And we need to somehow move the packets from the S0 to the Docker 0 bridge. And then, as we said before, it would reach the usual path to the container. How do we do that? So again, before we understand how, how do we do that, we need to understand what happens to packets that are received in a network device in Linux. Um, so, um, again, high level view, when a packet is received, uh, the routing table is, is searched and we're, the kernel is trying to find out if this packet is for us, is for an IP that we manage, or if this packet is for another machine and we're just helping it reach its final destination. Two options. Option one, the packet is for us, we do local delivery. The kernel searches for an application waiting for this packet and copies the data to this application. Option B, the kernel, the no application knows about it, and the kernel forward it to the device that would help it reach its final destination. Uh, so back to our problem, uh, we have a certain uh, IP. Uh, we get a packet to our IP because my boss don't know the internal IP of the container. He sends a packet to my laptop, that's what he knows. So we're getting a, a packet to 10, 25, or 1. Let's say that's my internal uh, that's the same IP of my network device. So the kernel says, hey, this packet is for us. It tries local delivery. Yeah. What happens with local delivery? How can we diagnose that? So this is a SNMP uh, counter, which we can uh, inspect. Uh, and you can see the RFC description, but let me simplify that, or in plain English, this is the number of UDP packets the kernel dropped because no application is waiting for that. And that's exactly what would happen to uh, the packet sent by my boss to my IP. Uh, we can see that in action. We can see Netcat sent a, a UDP packet to port 8000. We're checking the UDP no port ca uh, counter, and that is again usually installed by default. And you can see this, uh, the counter is now one because this packet was received the kernel said local delivery. The kernel so no application is waiting for this packet, so it increments this counter so that we'll be able to know that, it's, uh, that a packet was dropped. Yeah. Uh, so <coughs> how do we do that? The last network component uh, we need is called IP tables. IP tables, in a few words, is a way to modify or drop network packet during the processing. As we said before, the, uh, the network uh, receives the packet and starts processing it. It finds out whether, it, whether or not it's for us. It does either local um, delivery or forwarding. So in various points during this process, we can catch the packet and modify or drop it. And IP tables enable us to do that. Um, so we want IP tables to modify this packet before um, the decision is, is made whether this packet is for us or not. Because after that, it's too late. It would already try to uh, move it to, to, to an application waiting for, waiting for that. So that's the point. Um, we want to uh, catch the packet. Um, OK, so let's look at this command um, more closely. The first line is, as we said, at what stage do we want to process this packet? Uh, and the stage is pre-routing. Uh, to decide if this packet is for us or not, they can always look for the routing table, which contains local routing uh, rules and um, external routing rules. And we want to do that before routing, pre-routing, because after the routing table we look up, after they can decide if this packet is for us or not, uh, it's too late. Now the other line is which packet would we want to process? We don't want all packets. We want only packets for us. So this said packets that rec were received on F0 on our network card. 
of, with protocol UDP and whose destination port is the port we want to receive data for our application. So this is the second line, and the last line is what, what we want to do uh, with this um, packet. So I won't, I won't go into too much detail. DNAT is destination NAT, which basically means change the destination IP, and we're moving the destination and the port to uh, uh, the internal port of our uh, container. So what would happen is uh, the packet would be received in F0, uh, the kernel would start to process it. It would see the IP table rule that applies before routing. So before uh, deciding if this packet is for us or not, uh, it would apply this rule, and the rule would change the destination IP. IP. Once the destination IP is uh, changed, uh, the kernel would decide this packet needs forwarding. It doesn't need local delivery, it needs forwarding. It would forward it to Docker 0, and from Docker 0 it would reach the container. So as we saw, this worked. Uh, this worked, I think that, uh, at least my search uh, said is impossible, worked with the basic uh, Linux networking command available on almost any modern Linux machine. Um, so I think the lesson from this talk is that um, with simple uh, commands, you can do, you can solve interesting problems, but what you have to do is to understand the basics, understand the fundamentals, understand the packet flow and the packet processing. Uh, thank you very much. Before taking question, I have a puzzle for you, and I promise a prize to anyone uh, solving it and sending the solution uh, to me. Uh, I solved this. Uh, the, uh, I solved this problem, but when I solved this problem, every packet uh, that I received moved directly to the container. I want a solution that give precedence to my laptop. If there's an application on my laptop waiting for packets on port 8000, the application would take it. If I kill this application and now no one is waiting, I want the packet to move to the container. How do we do that? No external tools, just what's available on, uh, by default on uh, any Linux machine. This is my question for you. Now if anyone has a question, I'll be happy to. Let's start with... No, 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 no. I, okay, let, let, let me explain that again. I, I don't want to find out if someone is listening. I want that when I start an application listening to packets on port 8000, the application would get, would get, in, would get connections uh, to port 8000. But I want that in the very moment that I kill this application, those same packets would be forwarded to my container. I don't want to find out, I want, to, I want that to be done automatically for, for me.